going on guys welcome to episode two of conducting sounds my name is magic i go by mb magic um i'm 24 years old i'm from east new york brooklyn um you're in my studio right now in bushwick 448 um yeah i've been making beats for about six seven years now um i'm a part of a collective i started it with two friends um it's called madhouse and um yeah, you just out here cooking up and doing some cool shit. All right, so we have the first question here. As a youth or even growing up, what were things that you listened to and how do you think that relates to your beat making today? Damn, growing up, so growing up, I listened to a lot of shit that my brother listened to. So that was like the Neptunes, uh, Lupe Fiasco, Kanye, Jay-Z. Uh, damn a lot of shit but then when I was like figuring out music on my own it was like Tyler the Creator Mac Miller uh, Childish Gambino um, Big Sean and yeah I was really into Ye too like early early on like just college dropout shit and just like the shit he did there um and Pharrell's work and Timberland stuff. I, how could I forget Timberland? And yeah, so like a lot of that bounce, like just bounce, feel good music that you just, it's a signature sound every time you just understand what's going on. Influenced my music because um, like being from New York is all about bounce and you know, like keeping a, a good rhythm and all of those people I mentioned had incredible bounce and like pushed the envelope in music when it came to that. And I just wanted to be able to be able to do that in some way, but like keep it New York and myself and keep it cool. If you can call anyone right now to do a track over one of your beats, who would that person be and what beat would you choose? Damn. Shit. If I could call anyone, I'd probably call, I'd probably call Yeet. <laughs> I'll probably call Yeet and he'll, he'll do this beat I did yesterday. <laughs> Shit is crazy. Try and pull it up. Uh, it's not on this computer, but I think I have it on my phone. I could send it to myself. But yeah, I think he would go crazy on that shit. <laughs> Actually, it is on the screen. I'm capping, bro. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> cool. I was literally just playing it. like known for a lot of like crazy synthy shit but like when he gets experimental and like does some new shit it always sounds cool i feel like if he tries a new bounce with that it'll be it'll be fire as fuck out I, I think so we gotta get yeet on that oh yeah <laughs> come on twist list some producers who you try to take things from and put it into your music um everyone in my house judah judah hex uh what up cali um, Zoku, Two Tone J, Birthday Audio, um, all the people around me for I try to get a little bit of them and just try to like implement it in my music and just have it so that like I'm a product of my environment, whether that be where I came from, where I grew up at, and what I'm around now. So like the people I'm around now, they're great influence in my music. They're fucking incredible. 
and I, I just try to like implement whatever they do, everything I learn from them, little bits and pieces, and put it into my own shit. That's fire. Mm-hmm. That's fire. Yes, sir. What do you want to be remembered by when you stop making beats? I want to have a sound. You know, like when you hear a Pharrell song, you know it's a Pharrell song. When you hear a Timbaland song, you know it's a Timbaland song. I want it so, like, when you hear my shit, everyone knows what it is. And I just want to be some, like, in the conversation in New York when people talk about great music. What's the one beat you made where you realized that the practice and the hard work was catching up in real time? Damn. So this was like, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was in the studio with my homie like last year, like over the summer. Um, and he was just waking up out of this fucking nap. And I was cooking up some crazy shit. Like I had just made the melody and I started making the drums to it. And then like, I was doing it, I was thinking back to a time where I couldn't even make a melody. You know what I mean? And I'm like, damn, bro, I just made a melody. I'm doing the drums right now. And this shit sounds fucking crazy. And then my homie wakes up and he's telling me like, yo, this shit is nuts. And he's even telling me like, yo, you're fucking, you're just evolving. Cause he he was there from the beginning too, you know? So he was able to see just the groundwork and what's like, you know, the fruits of my labor, you know, being able to see it in real time was just crazy. And just being able to be aware of it and appreciate it in that moment was even better, you know? Cause a lot of people, are really focused and like really tunnel vision and they don't really appreciate where they're at like i was like five years ago me would look at myself now like bro you're doing amazing so i appreciate that every day and i try to be thankful for it what are three songs you wish you could have been in the studio when they were being made Ali, bro, that's hard as shit. That's hard as fuck. Um, <laughs> probably niggas in Paris. I think that's like a funny, like that would be just a funny session to be in. You know what I mean? Cause just like, I love shit talking. You know what I mean? I, I like being a part of that and just like being in conversation with just like good shit talkers. And it was talking that shit and that shit. So like, I felt like the room was hella funny. A lot of braggadocious shit going on. A lot of just talking shit. And I'm all for a good time. I feel like that would be funny as hell. Another song, and it was a good song. You know what I mean? Like they were going crazy. Um, Lil Uzi, Just Wanna Rock. He was going dumb on that shit too. Like it was just nothing but energy. I'm pretty sure he was dancing in the booth while he was recording it. Which just got me weak every time I think about it. Um, yeah, I love Uzi, man. Great energy. And then um, any like Drake timestamp songs, like 4 p.m. in New York, or like any of them, really, bro. Like, because what was he on? <laughs> like, what was he on? All right, so if I could ask, what's your favorite one? Fuck, bro. Jesus. Um, what is it, 6 p.m. in New York? This man, I don't even need to say anything. Just go listen to it if you have it. Just Not worried. 6 p.m. in New York. Drake, what did you, what did you do? Yeah, that's a great song. That's no a cap. great song. No cap. What is something producing has taught you? Being patient. Um, being patient and, uh, Knowing, knowing that no matter what the work you do every day, you got you just got to be prepared. You know what I mean? Like you, you might not see results the same day or the same week or even the same year. You just got to keep putting in the work and just keep, you know, whenever it's your time, you just got to be ready. You know what I mean? And if you keep putting in the work, you're going to be ready. You know, so being patient and being grateful too. Being thankful for like a lot of the shit that life brings you know what i mean like being able to make something that comes from my head and put it out to real life and then like everyone 
can enjoy it, it's just a no better feeling, you know. Who is your top five producers? Easy. Judah Hex, Little Cali, Soku, Two Tone J, and I'll throw Benny X out there. What is one of your dream collab tapes, either with an artist or a producer? Um, I want to do a tape with Cardo. Cardo got wings. Um, that's another huge influence I had. Just going into making music, not even really like growing up on it, because I didn't really grow up on like music, but like when I started learning to make beats and learning what it took to make beats, a lot of the songs that I was studying was a lot of shit that Cardo made. Like, if you want to talk about bounce, that man has it. So, definitely, I would love to do a tape with Cardo. Any artists? Cardo and it would be me and Cardo making the beat. We would be executive producing it, and the artist would probably be Thug or fucking Wiz or Larry June. <laughs>